Hello teachers, learners, and parents. Sir Jeff po at your service. Alam nyo ba na meron tayong website na tinatawag na DepEd Commons? Ang DepEd Commons ay binuo upang gawing accessible ang pagtuturo at pag-aaral dito sa ating bansa gamit lamang ang inyong mga smart devices gaya ng cellphones, tablets, at computers. Dito ay maaaring nating ma-access ang iba't ibang learning materials mula sa Department of Education. Meron itong mga interactive materials, electronic self-learning modules, at instructional video lessons mula sa DepEd TV na tiyak na makatutulong sa pag-aaral ng mga mag-aaral galing ka man sa public o private school. Walang problema dahil welcome ang lahat dito para ito sa mga guro, magulang at mga mag-aaral mula sa kinder hanggang grade 12, alternative learning system o ALS at pati na rin ang special education. At huwag kang mag-alala dahil kahit walang load ay maaari mong ma-access ang mga learning materials. Tama! Libre ito! Ang kailangan mo lamang gawin ay i-on ang iyong data at buksan lamang ang iyong browser at i-type ang commons.deped.gov.ph. Alam na ba ng iyong mga kasamahang guro o mag-aral ang tungkol sa DepEd Commons? I-share mo na ang video na ito upang matuto rin sila kung paano gagamitin ang DepEd Commons sa mabilis at napakadaling paraan. Muli! Ito po si Sir Jeff at kita-kits po tayo sa DepEd Commons. Paalam! Magandang araw, Sir Wilbur po at your service. Narito ang itulay upang gabayan ka sa inyong pag-aaral upang lubos na maunawaan ang iba't ibang paksa o subject. Ang itulay ay isang free online tutorial class na pinangungunahan ng ICTS Educational Technology Unit sa pumumuno ni Undersecretary Alain Del B. Pasqua. Ang programang ito ay hindi lamang para sa mga bata, kundi ito rin ay magsisilbing gabay sa mga magulang at mga guro kung paano nila ituturo o gagabayan sa bawat asignatura ang kanilang mga anak o mga estudyante. Sa kasalukuyan, ang self-learning module mula sa regyon ng Calabarzon at kilala sa tawag na pivot ang ginagamit sa ating itulay online class. Kaya ano pang hinihintay ninyo? Ihanda na ang inyong mga ballpen o lapis, papel o kwaderno at samahan kaming itulay ang pagkatuto para sa bawat batang Pilipino. Sama-sama tayong magtutulungan para malampasan ang mga hamon sa panahong ito. Halina't matuto kasama ang inyong online tutor sa oras na ito. Yan, so good afternoon po sa ating lahat, especially sa ating mga senior high school learners, pati rin sa ating mga viewers, kasama po natin mga parents or mga guardians na sinasamahan na kanilang mga anak para maitulay ang pagkatuto ngayong pandemya na ito. So I am Sir Tony Maipa or Tutor Tony. Ako po ang inyong magiging uh, online tutor, uh, tutor para sa subject na Senior High School Earth and Life Science. Ayan po. So, hintayin po natin yung screen. So, good afternoon po muli sa ating mga viewers from the past sessions, no? Uh, kompleto from Luzon, Visayas, and Mindanao. May mga viewers po tayo as well as sa mga kapitbahay po natin dito sa Metro Manila. So, good afternoon po sa inyo lahat. I hope you're all doing fine. You're doing great. So, mag-ingat po tayo sa lahat ng pagkakataon. So, again, we are using the Earth and Life Science uh, modules provided by the by region 4A Calabar Zone or the Pivot Modules. For this session, gagamitin na po natin ang module number 6 which is entitled The Earth's Internal Heat at saka ang module number 7 which is Magmatism. Alright. Ayan, so good afternoon po. So, I can see na mga viewers from Mindanao. Hello po. So, I hope okay kayo dyan. Ayan. So, are you ready? Yan ang panimulang tanong ko palagi, di ba? So, ready na ba kayo sa inyong mga pen and, pen and paper? Sa inyong mga learning modules? 
And I would also like to request everyone to have your presence of your mind and presence of your heart. Diba? So hindi lang tayo matututo rito mamaya. We can instill different values, Filipino values, later on sa ating lesson. And very important, para maging interactive ang ating uh, session for this afternoon, uh, comment naman kayo sa aking mga, sa mga questions or baka may questions kayo kay Sir Tony later on. Pwede niyo i-post sa ating comment section. section. And then, uh, please include your name, the name of your school, kung ikaw ay grade 11 or grade 12 senior high school student. Tapos lagay mo na rin yung location mo, kung saang province ka ba or kung saang city ka, para at least ma-mention naman kita later on sa ating mga mabilis na pagbate. Alright? So, yes, uh, yesterday, last week, <laughs> ayan, so inaral natin ang different classifications of rocks. Ayan, so isang mabatong usapan ang naganap last week. So we have igneous, sedimentary, and metamorphic rocks as the primary uh, classifications of rocks. We also learned about uh, the different exogenic processes. Ayan. So kung sinabi natin exogenic processes, ito yung mga proseso nangyayari or nagaganap sa surface ng Earth. Ang opposite niyan ay endogenic process. So mamaya, pupunta na tayo sa endogenic process. Ibinida natin yung mga different and amazing uh, rock formations sa makita sa, sa Pilipinas, tulad na nakita yung sa screen natin. And then we discuss about WED. So we have weathering, erosion, at saka deposition. So weathering is the uh, wearing away of rocks, magiging small particles. Pag sinabi naman natin erosion, matatransfer siya into one place, from one place into another. Tapos pag deposition, magstay na siya doon. And then gagampanan niya na kung ano man yung pwede niyang gampanan sa different cycles sa ating planeta. We also learn about the importance of soil kasi ang soil ay very essential. <laughs> Hindi lang lugaw ang essential. So we have soil as an essential factor for life and cycles in nature to continue. Kung walang soil, walang plants. And eventually, uh, uh, tayo mga animals and the humans will not survive kapag walang uh, nutrient kasi na, ang nutrient kasi na pinaprovide na ating soil. So it's an essential factor, a product of uh, weathering. Okay? Ayan. So for this particular session, ang ating mga objectives ay ang mga sumusunod. So we have first describe where the Earth's describe where the Earth's internal heat comes from. Okay. So tamang tama ano sa nararanasan natin ay na sobrang init kasi we are on the summer season nga. Pero actually yah, wala tayong summer sa Pilipinas no. So we only have the wet and the dry season. So nasa dry season na tayo so tamang tama. Ramdam na ramdam na natin ang ating sa init ng panahon. Ramdam na ramdam nila ba kung saan man kayo? Alright. And we also have to describe how magma is formed. So aral na natin mamaya. Bakit kailangan or bak bakit importante ng inaaral ng mga magma just like what we studied last time, di ba? So Akala natin yung mga rocks, wala silang importance. Pero actually, magma plays a very critical role para sa mga cycles sa Earth, sa planet Earth. Alright? Ayan, so let's start Earth and Life Science Week 3. So nilagyan ko lang ng summer vibes or dry season vibes para at least ma-feel natin kahit nasa bahay man tayo. No? Ngayon, alunood, nag-aaral, natututo with our, with our family or with our uh, friends. Ayan. So, uh, objective num number one natin is about Earth's internal heat. So, saan nga ba nanggagaling ang uh, init ng, ang, uh, ng ating uh, planetang Earth? Ayan. So, the uh, heat energy or thermal energy plays a vital role. If you would recall, sa ating week one, diniscuss natin, di ba, na isa ang heat sa uh, mga factor kung bakit nakakapag-provide ng buhay. So, we have WHA. So, we have water. Heat, so may kakayanan yung planet Earth, yung planeta, planeta natin, para ma-maintain yung kailangan niyang init so that life will continue. And A is atmosphere, of course. So the heat inside of our planet moves continents, build mountains, and causes earthquakes. So ayan, so mamaya, aralan natin yan, ha? So ang mahiwagang tanong kasi ngayon is, where does all this heat inside the Earth come from? Okay, yung init na naranasan, naranasan natin ngayon, actually, hindi naman talaga siya cause ng internal heat sa Earth. So, medyo may maliit na portion, yung radiation, mamaya, madadaan na natin yun. So, yun ang init na naramdaman natin. Okay? Alright, so let's have a quick review. Ayan. So, I think, last nitong inaral, nung nasa grade 10 pa kayo. So, sige nga. Uh, paulan na natin ng comments ang ating comment section. So, your task is to label the diagram below with the names of each layer. So, alam na alam nyo na to. Include a brief description of each of the Earth's layers. Sabi yan sa module number 6, page 9. 
So, balikan natin, no? So, of course, the outermost layer is called the crust. And then, the next layer, the thickest layer would be, of course, your mantle. And then, finally, you have the, the core. Okay? So, balikan din natin yung uh, different components niya. No? So, general kasi masyado to, sir. Alright, so we have four crust. We have two types of crust. We have the oceanic crust and the continental crust. So oceanic crust, rin nag-hold ng mga oceans. Pag sinabi natin continental crust, dito makikita yung mga continents kung saan tayo nabubuhay or nakatira. Mantle is the thickest layer of the earth. It is composed of uh, the upper mantle and the lower mantle. So the upper mantle medyo mas... Uh, mas manipis ang kayang diameter or mas mababaw siya compared sa lower mantle. And then we have, of course, the core at the center, which is made up of the outer core and the inner core. So, tingnan natin yung diagram, no? So, shoutout muna tayo ng mabilisan lang. Uh, hello sa mga nanonood from Nueva Ecija, from, I can see, New Lucena, Division of Iloilo. Ilo. Hello po sa inyo. Good afternoon. As well as sa SDO Pampanga. Ayan, kung babalikan natin ang grade 10 earth science natin, no? so we have, or you can see, based sa seismic data, kasi wala pa naman taong nakapunta dyan, di ba? Based sa seismic data na nag-gather na ating mga geologists, ng ating mga experts, ito yung uh, approximate uh, kilometers, yung lalim ng mga bawat layers. So, no? As we can see, mantle is the thickest, and then followed by the core, and then finally the thinnest would be the crust. And if you would recall then yung term na asthenosphere gagamitin natin yan no so asthenosphere yung kulay green na portion and then followed by yung sa taas of course yung pinakataas yung the crust pag pinagsama natin yung crust at saka asthenosphere that will give us the term lithosphere all right so asthenosphere crust is equal to lithosphere ayan so dako na tayo actually we have uh, the two sources of heat na pinanggagalingan na init ng ating Earth para masustain ang buhay at masustain ang mga different cycles sa ating planeta. So first one is called the primordial heat. Pag sinabi natin primordial, it is existing from the beginning. So ito yung init na nanggaling sa uh, once na so nag-build ano, nag or na-form yung planeta natin. Mamaya, tignan po natin yan. And then finally, we have the radiogenic heat. Pag sinabi natin radiogenic, yung term from the word radioactivity. If you can remember, sa inyong chemistry class, no, pag radioactive, yung mga molecules, they try to be stable and they release a certain amount of energy. Ayan. So, good afternoon po sa ating mga viewers from Sarangani. Wow, good afternoon po sa inyo. I'm watching from Leyte. I hope you're doing well po sa Leyte. Okay. Ayan. So, uh, focus na tayo sa primordial heat. Pag sinabi natin primordial heat, Meron dalawang uh, factors kung saan nanggagaling yung init na yun. So the heat is from first accretion and the second one is the bombardment of the earth. As you can see sa picture natin sa presentation ni Sir, so yung uh, nafoform pa lang tayo, uh, nafoform pa lang yung planeta natin. As you can see, no, kulay yellow siya, no, depicted by this animation. Yellowish or orange kasi nga very active yung mga tectonic uh, uh, activities natin dyan. And kapag binobombard tayo ng mga space objects like the meteors and the asteroids, yung impact na yun, nagko-contribute yun sa init. Parang ano, uh, di ba every time na may minahammer tayo or may pinupokpok tayo. Let's say for example, nung bata pa kami or bata pa tayo, we used to play tansan. Di ba? Tansan is made of metal, pinipipi natin. Tapos pag ginawa, uh, pinipipi natin siya using a hammer or martillo, pag pinipipi natin siya, if we touch the, the, the tansan or yung pinaka-cup ng soft drinks, di ba, yung gawa sa metal, umiinit siya. So that's the analogy for that. And sir, ano yung accretion na tinatawag? So remember, no? so during the formation of the Earth, uh, factor na yun kung, ba, kung saan nag-originate or nanggaling yung init. So what is about accretion, sir? Accretion naman is, ayan, so, ang kinuha ko na lang na example for this is homogeneous accretion. Why? Because this one uh, best suits the, the description kung saan nag-originate yung init ng Earth. So, homogeneous accretion is similar elements stick together creating a solid mass. Yan, di ba? So, ang Earth ay isang terrestrial planet. So, we, have, we are a solid planet. So, the heat generated in this process melts the particles. 
yung mga particles ay tumutukoy sa mga elements. So during that time, yung mga uh, metallic elements na during that time, so those elements sink to the center because of gravity. Kaya nga, yung core natin, yung pinaka-inner core, ay gawa sa solid iron at saka nickel. Diba? So parang kumbaga, may after some time, after millions of years, nagsettle sa center or sa gitna yung pinaka-solid because of its density or because of its weight. Tsaka sa pag-push na rin ng gravity. Right? So that is accretion. So again, bombardment ng mga uh, space objects during the formation of the Earth. At saka yung tinatawag natin na accretion or yung accumulation ng mga element or elemental particles ang nag-contribute uh, sa tinatawag natin primordial heat. Okay? So primordial heat. Ayan po. Central Visayas, Region 3, uh, Region 7. Good afternoon po sa inyo. Ayan. All right. So let's now take a look at what we call the radiogenic heat. Ayan, ang damadam ko ng init. <laughs> ang init sa room na ito. <laughs> the heat generated by long-term radioactive uh, the radioactive decay in Earth's interior. So, ano ba yung radioactive decay na yan? So, ito yung radioactive decay. Sige, I'll give you the presentation for that. Ayan, as you can see on the upper right side, so we have, may, may tinatawag tayo ng mga parent isotope or mga elemental particles or mga atomic nucleus. The protons and the neutrons, the mga particular elements. You see, for example, well, ayan, potassium-40, thorium-232, uranium-235, and uranium-238. Yung mga numbers na yan ang nagkakorespond sa number of neutrons nila. Kaya ang tawag sa kanila ay mga isotopes. Once they decay, para maging stable sila, they release a daughter isotope, nanganganak sila ng panibagong element, and at the same time, they produce heat. Yun ang nagkukos ng radiogenic heat. So, nang kagaling siya sa radioactivity na nagaganap sa mga isotopes natin. So, again, that's potassium, thorium, and uranium. I hope nare-recall nyo pa yan sa inyong chemistry class, no? Alright. So, the radioactive decay heats up the magma in the asthenosphere, creating convection currents. If you would recall, ano ba sir yung convection currents na yan? So, pag sinabi kasi natin current, ito yung pagdaloy or pag-ikot. Ayan, sa mga liquids, sa mga fluids. Ayan, as you can see in the diagram. Or pwede natin, uh, pwede natin yan i-compare every time na nagpapainit tayo ng water. So the cool molecules, yung mas malamig na molecules, mababa, then eventually nag-heat up yung mga warm molecules ay pumupunta sa, sa itaas. Ayan, so ganun yung principle behind the convection currents. You'll know more about convection currents later on when we discuss convection. Okay, so ayan. So just to give you an idea, ganyan yung mechanism. So we have here an animation. So wala pa nakakarating sa portion na yan. Hanggang crust pa lang tayo, no? So this one is basically uh, a representation of our data scientists, mga geophysicists natin, kung paano, na, uh, paano yung mechanism na tinatawag natin na convection current. Ayan. Alright, so we have radiogenic heat. Uh, again, no? So yung uh, radiogenic heat, yung heat na kinukos nito ay nagiging nararamdaman natin every time na uh, nag-erupt yung mga volcanoes at saka gumagalaw yung mga plates natin. So yung kapag magkakaroon ng mga earthquakes, mga minor man yan or major earthquakes. So yun ang paramdam ng earth na ibig sabihin ay uh, internally uh, siya ay mainit. So again, primordial heat and radiogenic heat. Alright, let's try to answer this activity. So again, we have two sources of internal heat. Now for Earth, we have the radiogenic and the primordial heat. Alright. So tingnan natin, identify the sources of internal heat by writing RH kapag radiogenic heat ang describe sa statement natin. And then you write PH for primordial heat. So you can comment down your answers sa ating comment box. So first, Presence of different isotopes. I'm going to give you the clue. Different isotopes of heat producing element in the mantle and the crust. Radiogenic ba or primordial heat? Actually, the answer would be radiogenic heat. Kasi nga, may radioactivity sa mga isotopes. Next, internal heat accumulated by dissipation of the planet. So pag sinabi natin dissipation, and it disperse yung heat na na uh, and they disperse equally sa different parts ng planeta natin. So, RH or PH kaya yan. So, hello po sa mga bagong viewers po natin. So, we are uh, we are now in week 3 of Senior High School Earth and Life Science. We're talking about Earth's internal heat. 
Number two, the answer is primordial heat. So, nag-start pa yon during the formation of our planet. Next, the release of accretional energy. Kanina, the word accretion pertains to primordial heat. All right. Thank you for answering, Ms. Marichu Lyson. Next, processes involved in mantle convection. Kanina, yung convection current natin. Yeah, so sige, don't don't uh, don't hesitate to comment down your answers. Christine Manalili Hernandez. Ayan, thank you for answering. Number four is correct. You are correct. RH processes involved in mantle convection is radiogenic heat. And finally, release of thermal energy as a result of spontaneous nuclear disintegration. So may nangyayari sa nucleus ng atom. That is of also a radiogenic heat source. Okay? Uh huh. Let's acknowledge uh, those who answered. Glenn Antipala and yes, Miss Marju Lyson. Thank you for answering. Good job. Ayan. So we recall lang natin na mabilis yung methods of heat transfer. No? So we discussed na to when you were in elementary or when you were in high school. So we have conduction, convection, at saka radiation. So all of this, yung tatlong to, uh, the in, kumbaga, may interplay between the this heat between these methods of heat transfer. Okay? So, hindi pwedeng radiation lang, hindi pwedeng conduction lang or convection. So, kailangan na interplay para at least balance and distribution ng heat. Ayan. If you would recall, conduction, convection, and radiation is always uh, symbolized by this diagram, no? Conduction, papasu ka pag inawakan mo yung metal. Convection is the movement or the transfer of heat sa liquid, yan sa diagram na yan. Radiation sa space. Ang heat ay na transfer by means of empty space. So, conduction, mabilis lang. Saan ba nang gagaling or nagaganap yung conduction? So, conduction happens in the Earth's surface. Kasi pag sinabi natin conduction, ito yung heat transfer between molecules. And ito ay nangyari sa mga solids. Ayan. So, kaya siya nangagaling or nangyayari sa lithosphere, sa solid part ng Earth natin. Diba? Sa, sa crust at saka sa asthenosphere. And, as yeah, so you can see nga, sabi ko kanina, interplay between conduction, convection, and radiation ay kailangan para ma-distribute yung heat ng maayos sa ating planeta. Convection naman, so the convection is the transfer of heat in fluids. If you would recall your terms, so pag sinabi natin fluids, ito yung mga liquids at saka mga gases. So, sir, saan nangyayari yung convection? Mostly, ang convection ay nang, uh, nangyayari sa, of course, sa liquid part, which is the outer core at saka yung mantle. Again, so outer core siya at saka sa mantle. Doon ang nangyayari, yung pinakita ko kanina na convection current, in which the mantle moves uh, on the Earth's interior very slowly. Ayan. And compared sa conduction, uh, according to experts, no, ang convection is a more efficient means of heat transfer in the Earth. So, mostly convection talaga uh, yung mechanism. Alright? So, although napi-play pa rin na mahalagang role ng conduction and the third, which is the radiation. So, radiation is technically defined as the transfer of heat in empty space or it's a contactless transfer. Okay? So, it happens. So, sa Earth, saan siya nangyayari? Between the atmosphere and the Earth's surface and the hottest parts of the core and the lower mantle. So, sa inner part, nagra-radiate pa rin yung inip. Okay, so radiation, we also, uh, we can also relate that sa nangyayaring uh, radiation between the transfer of solar radiation, di ba, sa ating atmosphere, uh, inaabsorb yung certain portion and then nare-reflect naman yung ibang uh, radiation pabalik ng uh, outer space para balance, para hindi sobrang init. Pero yun nga, because of the greenhouse gases, di ba, yung mga greenhouse gases emissions, greenhouse emissions natin, na-stuck yan sa atmosphere and nagtatrap yun ng init. Kaya, nagkakaroon tayo ng uh, global warming, tinatawag. Alright, so let's have another activity. Ayan, so good afternoon po, watching from Banisil National High School from General Santos City Division. So I hope yung mga taga Mindanao po, no? So I heard parang may low pressure area dyan na malapit, kaya nakakaranas po kayo ng mga pagulan. So ingat-ingat po tayo. So let's try to complete this statements. Pilisan lang natin, no? So, the surface layer of the Earth is called the... I'll guide you na lang, no? So, for those na gustong magkaroon ng copy na answer for this one, uh, screenshot nyo na lang or you can uh, replay the, the session later on para mas maaral nyo pa yung mga statements. But for the meantime, so we have 
First, of course, the crust. The surface layer of the Earth is called the crust. This layer is broken up into pieces called the Earth's plates. And these plates float on the mantle. Heat rising and falling inside the mantle creates current called, ano tawag sa current na yon? That is called the convection current. The convection current moved the plates. Ayan, so pinapagalaw niyo yung plates. Hindi naman totaling gagalaw. No? So dahan-dahan lang yan. So nagkakaroon nga lang ng mga earthquakes after hundreds of years. No? So that's why, uh, that's due to the movement of the magma. This movement is known as the plate tectonics. The movement of the Earth's plate causes earthquakes and volcanic eruptions. So sa choices nyo, nakalagay kasi dyan volcanoes, baka nire-refer dyan ng writer is yung formation ng volcano. Or yun nga. So nilagay ko na lang is... Uh, movement of the Earth's plate causes earthquakes and kasi causes in term na ginamit. So, it causes earthquakes and volcanic eruptions. So, I hope, yan, sige, screenshot nyo na. Ayan, namnamin natin yung answer before we proceed to the next slide. Ayan, so good afternoon po sa ating mga viewers. I hope you're having a great time kahit medyo mainit. Na may merienda ba kayo dyan or meron kayong palamig dyan? Para malabanan ang init. Alright. So we have the next objective na tayo, next portion na tayo. We have what we call the magmatism. So ganyan ang magma. Alright. So may nakita kong GIF sa internet. So we have here a magma. Kung makita nyo pa lang, no, parang mafe-feel nyo na sobrang init niya. Di ba? Alright. And as you can see, mabagal yung paggalaw ng kanyang uh, pinaka-substance. So, ano nga ba yung magma? Alright? Nagpasadahan na natin yan last week, no? So, recall lang natin. Magma is composed of semi-liquid, hot, molten rocks located beneath the earth. So, they are specifically in the melted mantle rock and the oceanic plate. So, ayan. So, magma, ang uh, type ng rock na napoform niya is, of course, the extrusive and the intrusive igneous rock. So, yun. So, it also defined or differentiated what is a lava ba and what is a magma. So, kapag nasa loob pa siya ng interior ng mundo, so we have magma. We use the term magma. And then, kapag nasa, nailabas na siya ng volcanism or volcanic activity, na-reach niya na yung surface ng Earth, ang tawag sa kanya ay lava na. Alright? So, meron din tayong term na gagamitin mamaya, magma chamber. So, doon makikita. So, may mechanism sa Earth natin, no? So, sa formation ng mga volcanoes, it creates a uh, uh, storage, para mas storage facility. <laughs> storage facility, ang, ang tawag ay magma chamber. And then magma, please take note that it is made up mostly of the elements silicon at saka oxygen. So, yung sinasabi ko last week, no? Na silicate sa combination of silicon and oxygen. And uh, a trivia lang, no? From earthobservatory.sg. So, did you know that lava can also be found at the bottom of oceans? Yes, may mga volcanic, underwater volcanoes kasi tayo. And yung mga volcanoes na yon ay makita sa mga mid-ocean ridges at responsible yon kung bakit meron pa rin tayong ocean floors. Kasi kung wala yung mga yung uh, lava na in-excrete o nilalabas na yon yung mga nasisirang ocean floor natin ay hindi mapapalitan. Kung maga yung cycle ay uh, matitigil. So, very important yung a role na ginagam pa na ng mapa magma mayan, mapa magma man yan or lava. Yan, watching from Demetrio Marcrohon Leyte. Ayan po, so good afternoon po sa inyo. Good afternoon, Miss Christy. Ayan, so I hope you're learning from our discussion. So let's have the, the term magmatism na. Magmatism is the process under the Earth's crust where formation and movement of magma happens or occur. So saan ba nangyayari, sir, yung tinatawag natin ng magmatism? As you can see, sige nga, ayan, no? so we have the crust at saka sa mantle, pero yung crust sa lower part, kasi sa upper part yun tayo nakatira. So lower part of the Earth's crust called uh, the upper and the upper portion din ng mantle called the asthenosphere. Ayan. So as you can see, based on sa diagram, no, they rise. They tend to rise. Kasi liquid yan eh. Ang liquid kasi may property yan na parang kung saan sila pwedeng lumusot, lulusot at lulusot yan, nahahanap ng place para makalabas sila. So that's one <laughs> characteristics of liquid. So magma. Alright? Okay. So ang mga geologists, gumagamit sila ng term, very important yung term na to we have what we call partial melting. So yung partial melting na yan, 
uh, ito ay nagaganap between the minerals of the rock. At of course, very important yung factor ng temperature at saka pressure. So sa diagram na nakikita niyo sa ating presentation, ayan. So yung mga parts na yan, yung parang mga fragments na yan, these represents the, the minerals. And eventually, as temperature rises, no, uh, some of them will melt, kaya nga partial melting. Yung iba kasi mag ma 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 withstand nila yung, yung init or yung temperature. Ayan. So on the second part ng ating presentation, nagroon na orange. Yung orange na yan represents the, the magma. So naging magma na siya. And eventually, pag may melt pa rin yung ibang minerals, ayan. So maiwan yung iba hanggang ma-form na yung tinatawag nating magma. So that's what we call partial melting. Ayan. Very important din, class. Mga ka -ELL natin dyan. So, melting in the mantle requires one of three possible events to occur. So, isa lang dito, kahit isa lang dito mangyari, it can form magma already. So, first is, tandaan ha, increase in temperature. So, napasadahan ko na yan kanina. So, kailangan syempre na mataas sa temperature para gar magkaroon ng pagtunaw or pagmelt. Next is, a decrease in pressure. Decrease of pressure. So, mamaya, bakit decreaser, di ba? As you go deeper sa earth, it uh, nag-increase ang pressure. Pero there's a certain level lang ng pressure na kailangan para ma-form ang mga magma. So, tandaan na, hindi increase. Decrease sa uh, pressure. And then finally, addition of volatiles. Ano ba yung mga volatiles na yan? Malalaman natin yan sa mga next na discussions. Alright? So, unahin natin yung increase temperature. Saan ba nangyayari ito? Sa mga tinatawag natin na convergent boundaries. Diba? Yung convergent boundaries isa sa mga type ng boundary kung saan nagbubunggoan yung mga plates. And then eventually isa, since mas magaan siya, uh, lumulubog siya pa ilalim. Alright? So nagbe-melt yung mga particles doon. Alright? So increase in temperature. Ayan. As you can see, there's melting here. Ayan. The second factor is a decrease of pressure. So bakit nga ba hindi increase? Bakit decrease? Ang sabi kasi ng mga geologists natin, ng mga experts po natin, mantle rocks may remain solid when exposed to high pressure. So, ganun yung characteristics nila. So, kapag high pressure, in instead of they liquefy, they solidify. So, kailangan may certain level lang ng pressure. So, kaya hindi siya ganun sa sobrang lalim na part. Okay? So, saan nangyayari yun? So, nangyayari yun sa mga tinatawag natin ng mid-ocean ridges, as seen on my diagram here. At ang tawag doon ay decompression melting. Okay? Yung temperature na nare-reduce, or I mean, the pressure na, na nare-reduce ay nagtitrigger para mag-melt yung magma. Ang term na ginagamit ng mga geologists doon ay decompression melting. Again, it happens in mid-ocean ridges. As you can see, no, hindi lang siya uh, sa isang lugar sa mundo. Baga distributed yan, iba't iba, depende sa kung ano klaseng plates or boundaries meron sa particular na lugar na yun. And finally, Ano ba yung volatile, sir? So, pag nag-add tayo ng volatiles like water at saka carbon dioxide, pag sinabi natin volatiles, ito yung mga substances na madaling mag-vaporize. Pag sinabi natin mag-vaporize, from liquid, nagiging gas siya. Mabilis lang. So, best example, lagi natin ginagamit ngayon, di ba? Alcohol. Alcohol is a volatile substance, di ba? So, lagay mo lang dyan, liquid from liquid, uh, uh, after seconds, mag-evaporate na siya. Diba? Or mag-vaporize. Okay? So, for this particular region, ang tawag natin ng subduction zones, kung saan nagmi-meet ang mga, mga plates or continental plates, nagbubungguan sila, ang tawag natin for kapag nag-add tayo ng mga volatiles like water, may, na, may nagsisip na water, di ba? So, uh, alam naman natin na may mga oceanic crust na dyan. Ang tawag na natin this time would be flux melting. Okay? So, kanina, decompression melting, Ngayon naman, flux melting. Kasi namin natin kasing flux, parang dumadaloy, flux. Yan. So kasi nga, may element na tayo ng water. Ang nangyayari yan sa mga subduction zones. Yan, mga viewers natin from Jensen, good afternoon po sa inyo. Ayan, so medyo mahaba to, no? So puro sentence completion tayo this week. <laughs> Alright, so let's have a quick uh, answer lang dito. Sana sumagot naman kayo. Namimiss ko yung mga responses ninyo sa ating mga activities. Alright, so number one, blank is composed of blank, hat, molten rocks. So pag nagsasagot tayo ng sentence completion, yun solely may choices. Pero kapag senior high school, dapat wala na. <laughs> Sige, number one, magma. Sige, nagtungan natin. Magma is composed of black, uh, blank, hot, molten rocks. Semi-liquid. 
located beneath the Earth, specifically in the mantle, melted mantle rock and oceanic plate. Number two, when magma solidifies, it creates blank found on the surface of the Earth. It creates igneous rocks. Number three, magma is found in the magma chamber, di ba? Doon yung reservoir nila, yung pinaka, pinag-iimbakan ng magma. While blank is found on the surface of the Earth once the blank erupts. Lava, and of course, when the volcano erupts. Number four is a process under the Earth's crust where formation and movement of magma occurred. So may mga viewers tayo mahabol from Aklan. So good afternoon po. Wow, well represented tayo. Luzon, Visayas, and Mindanao. Magmatism. And finally, number five. O kanina, sinabi ko to. Magma is mostly composed of the what two elements? We have silicon and oxygen. Yan, di pa tayo tapos. <laughs> First half pa lang yun. Number six, the answer is partial melting. And then, certain process. And yung number seven kasi, inisa-isa natin yung mga factors. Increase in temperature, decrease of pressure, at saka addition of volatiles. Number eight, uh, conduction in mantle happens when heat is transferred from hotter molten rocks to the Earth's cold crust. This process is known as heat transfer. It happens at the convergent boundaries where tectonic plates are crushing together. So you can take a screenshot na lang of this later on, no? Para matulungan ko kayo sa pagsagot ng inyong mga modules. So aralin, balikan. You can take a replay of this episode later on. Or you may download the copies of this, the copy of all the Itulay PowerPoint presentations. Ina-upload po natin yan sa ating DepEd Common. So pwedeng gamitin ng mga teachers natin, ng mga students, di ba? Enhance na lang natin yung PowerPoint. So number nine, last two blanks natin, this is known as decompression melting at nangyayari yan sa mga mid-ocean region. So yung 8, 9, saka 10, ito yung tatlong factors no, na diniscuss ni Sir. And finally, number 10, when water or carbon dioxide is added to hot rocks, blank occurs. Ayun, flux melting. Kasi may water na, saka mga volatiles na, di ba? It occurs around what we call the subduction zone. So learners, ayan, mabilis lang. Sige, take a screenshot of that. And also watching, uh, uh, watching sa ating session is from Isabella. Good afternoon po sa inyo. Alicia Vocational School, Isabella Division. Isabella is in Region 2. Ayan, sobrang initin dyan, di ba, ma'am? Ma'am G. Domingo Antonio. Ayan, parang sa'yo ng name. Pilido. Alright? Ayan, so quick assessment lang, mabilis lang to end our session. What term is used to describe a semi-liquid hot molten rocks located beneath the earth? Is it a lava, a magma, a rock, or a sand? Sige nga, namimiss ko na yung mga sagot ninyo. Parang ano ah, ang tahimik na ating comment section this week. Alright, number one of course is 1B magma. Number two, in what part of the earth does magmatism happen? A stenosphere, earth's crust, Earth score, lithosphere. Ayan, yung mga sumasagot na tayo. Si Ms. Marichu, ang ating ano ata ngayon, uh, best in recitation. Ayan, B, correct. At saka si Alisa Abella. Your answer is correct. Watching uh, from YouTube, Peach Charlie Magma, you're also correct. Ayan. Number two, what's the answer? Of course, it happens in asthenosphere. So magmatism happens in the asthenosphere. Number three, let's write this. A pupil, Sharolyn B. Palomba. Sharolyn B. Palombato High School. Ayan para Miss Marichu. Hello po. Good afternoon po sa inyo. Ayan. Number two. Ayan, may mga pahabol na sagot. Number three. What are the two most abundant elements in magma? Oh, kanina po sinasabi to. Oxygen iron, oxygen magnesium, silicon and aluminum, or silicon and oxygen. Ayan. The correct answer, of course, is the silicon and oxygen. Number four, what process occurs if there are formation and movement of the magma under the Earth's crust? Ano yung pinaka-proseso na yun? Lagi ko yung sinasabi kanina. The correct answer is, ayan, tama si Alisa Abella. Okay, we have partial melting. So yung pinaka mechanism, paano nakaform yung mga magma natin? Eventually, kapag nag reach na surface ng Earth, we have what we call the lava. And finally, number five, ano yung hindi daw factor para mag, uh, mag, maganap yung tinatawag nating partial melting? 
Additional volatiles, decrease in pressure, increase in pressure, or increase in temperature? The correct answer is C, increase in pressure. Dapat kasi nag-decrease. Kasi pag nag-increase, magsasolidify daw si magma. Alright? Ayan yung mga concepts natin. And finally, to be, for you to be inspired, ba tayo sa buhay, di ba? Keep the fire burning. Next na advice niya, go with the flow. Tuloy lang ang laban, di ba? Problems come and go, di ba? Just go with the flow. Next, be uplifting. Di ba? I-uplift natin yung mga kasama natin, family members natin, friends, chat natin, kamustahin natin sila. Because yung pandemya na ito ay sobrang very challenging. Maging uplifting sana tayo. And then it's all a matter of time. So may time tayo, mga volcanoes, may time para sila mag-erupt. And tayo naman, may time tayo para, para mag-shine, di ba? Di ba? Alright. And finally, enjoy lang ang buhay. You have the blast. Ayan. And you tell your your loved ones, I love you. <laughs> I love you with a Korean heart sign. <laughs> Advice from a volcano. And that ends our session for this week. Earth and Life Science Week 3. I hope you learned so much from our discussion. Muli, but you can take a replay of this session and you can download the PowerPoint presentations of all e uh online tutors natin sa ating DepEd Commons. So once again, thank you very much. I'll see you all next week sa ating week 4 na discussion. Next one, next subject would be uh, Tutor Cat Senior High School Media and Information Literacy. So once again, this is Sir Tony. I wish you all the best. Goodbye. I love ya. Bye. Sigurado ako na marami ka na namang natutuhan sa ating itulay tutorial session ngayong araw. Tandaan, ito ay hindi lamang para sa ating mga mag-aaral, kundi pati rin sa ating mga minamahal na guro at mga magulang na kaagapay natin para maituloy ang pagkatuto sa kabila ng nararanasang pandemya. Patuloy ding sumubaybay sa DepEd TV para sa mga araling ginawang video episodes. Mapapanood ito mula lunes hanggang sabado, alas 7 ng umaga hanggang alas 7 ng gabi sa inyong mga telebisyon. Abangan bukas mula alauna ng tanghali ang iba pang aralin sa ating e life free online tutorial session sa English. I-like and subscribe at manatiling nakasubaybay sa ating e life tutorial session sa DepEd EdTech Unit FB page at Educational Technology Unit channel sa YouTube at sa DepEd Tayo at DepEd Philippines social media accounts. Paalam!